Hello everybody. Welcome to DCS. Today we're going to be conducting air-to-air -air refueling on the Hornet. Going, going over some advice on how best to do that. Just what the trick is to it. Technique. The basics are to contact the tanker using TACAN in air-to-air -air mode. And uh, if you've been flying the Hornet, you'll know how to do that. That's fairly straightforward. So we assume we found the tanker at this point. Get on the radio. Texaco, 1-1, Colts, 1-1, request rejoin. Colt 1-1, Texaco, 1-1, proceed to pre-contact at 15,000, at 3 zero, zero. Texaco, 1-1, Colts, 1-1, proceed to pre-contact Set the master arm to off. Turn countermeasures off. This plane is still in early access. There's no... Oh, that was the wake turbulence. That's excellent. That's really awesome. We hit the turbulence from the tanker. Be ready for that next time. Slow ourselves down with the air brake. You can overtake him really easily. You have to watch the closing speed on him. We're going to change the tack end to receive mode and radar to standby. Again, this is an early access. There's no checklist for this plane yet. We'll bring up the fuel page. If this is similar to other aircraft that people think we do. Check the airspace around us. All you need to do is extend the probe. We'll just increase speed and come from the tanker. Watch out how fast you close on it. It's easy to overshoot it. More air brake there. And get the crazy flying out of the way. So borrowing it, some advice from World War II training films. One thing they tell you is that you already know how to do this. There are things you already know how to do that you just need to apply to the airplane. Now, I'm not a real pilot. I'm not even an expert gamer. This is probably the fifth time I've done this, even in the F-18. I did it a lot in the A-10. and got the basics learned there, and it's a transferable skill. You get what you're supposed to be doing in one plane, and it'll, it'll transfer over to another one. This is a little different for me. This is gonna use the basket instead of the probe, and it seems different at first, but it shouldn't be. First part here is you want to be stable behind the tanker. You want to get yourself, you don't have to trim the uh, Hornet, it's an auto trimming, but you do want to be stable, bring up the controls there, you want to be stable behind the tanker here, match its airspeed, match its attitude before you call for contact. You should be hands off the stick at this point. Ready, recontact. Clear contact. Now controlling your speed here is like controlling your car on the road. You do this every day. This is the analogy to the car. Your, your throttle is your gas pedal, and if you, if you notice what your foot does in your car, you're, you're just on and off the gas. You're not slamming it down. It's how you keep pace with the car in front of you without thinking about it. So when the throttle's here, you just walk them a little bit. Watch the control input and watch what they're doing. You're just coming in and out and in and out. And there's a lag to it, too. When, you know, when you give it the, you're going to climb. These are all related to each other. So as you give it the throttle air, see how you climb a little bit? Speed is altitude. Pitch is also airspeed. And you watch this part. So you get the speed under control. And the, the attitude of your aircraft is like a bicycle. You know, if you look at your input on a bicycle, and you're bouncing, and this is bouncing around. There you go. You get this oscillation because your inputs are out of time with the plane, or they're in time with it. You're oscillating. 
if you watch and don't watch the basket. The basket is out in front of you and it's kind of a trick to you. It makes you want to, you know, to fly your plane into it. If that's not what you're trying to do, you're flying off formation off the tanker. Just keep the whole picture in your sight, the whole sight picture, mostly the tanker. You're taking fuel. Come forward a little bit and take the slack off. What I'm saying about the aircraft controls, if you, you can't even see them on the input, but you're, you're back and forth of them like the handlebars on a bicycle or a balancing on a balance beam. And there's opposite inputs to what you do. If you pitch up and you see the aircraft pitch up, by the time you see that and react to it, you're out of time. And then you push the nose down again, you're going to start bouncing and oscillating. So what's going on here is just like riding a bicycle, just like balancing on a balance beam, you're giving it a little bit of opposite input. As soon as you pitch up, you pitch down again to catch that action before it gets out of control, before it cycles out of control. As you come forward, when you come forward here a little bit, yeah, so you can see the oscillation there, so it's getting a little out of control. Just relax, be the ball, keep it under control and come back in. And again, it's every action, there's a reaction. Every time you start the plane downward here, as I'm pitching down, as I'm coming down, I'm, I'm pulling back up again to dampen out that oscillation that comes out of the plane, the out-of-time or in-time inputs that are going to build on each other. You don't want these in sync with each other. There's very quick, if you see the very quick motions of the stick over there, that's what's keeping the plane steady. You just come forward, right, don't get excited, come right forward into it, and just that little bouncing is the tanker. Not That's me, it's not the tanker, it's steady. That's me doing that. You know, and uh, it's do good to do this. So I'm not so much of an expert. It doesn't make it look too easy. You know, it, calm down there. You're taking fuel. Then hold it right here. You've got there's a lot more room with the basket. You've got more room to play with it, but you shouldn't. You just hold it right here. Watch the tanker. Watch the whole tanker, especially that pod in front of you. I find that. Your eye gets pulled over to that tanker being off center like this compared to the A-10, and you're going to want to fly where your eyes are looking. So I try not to look too much at the fuselage of the tanker. It's going to make you drift towards it almost subconsciously. There you go. And I'm there's no death grip on the stick. Just lost a little speed there. Just come back. So you're walking the throttle, walk the throttle up, dampen the dampen the bouncing out, give it some inputs back and forth with a stick, counter every motion with another one, keep the vibration. There you go. Bring yourself a little forward there. I think by now, so you can tell by now, I got it. You just get a little feedback. You predict what the plane's going to do. You're not reacting to what you see on the screen. You're predicting what's going to happen, and your hand is just moving to dampen all that out. And you're perfectly relaxed. I have my joystick sitting on a tabletop, actually. It's not even fastened down. I'm not pushing it off the table, or I don't need it bolted down or anything like that. Very relaxed, and you got it. Walking across, look at the throttle input. See the throttle? Kind of keeping pace there, add a little more. But as soon as you start moving forward, come off of it. And the stick is just very tiny of the inputs to it. Imperceptible. Just kind of back and forth, just like handlebars on a bicycle. And there we are. And the more you do this, the more you just memorize it. And it becomes second nature. It seems impossible at first, but it becomes pretty easy. And this is, again, this may be the fifth time I've done this. And that's all. Hope that was helpful. Transfer complete. And thanks for watching.